my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those who are watching live, those who are watching on Facebook, or those who are watching on YouTube. All those mediums are a great opportunity, especially Facebook and also YouTube, to actually have a conversation. So if you have questions, please feel free to converse. Make sure you subscribe to those channels, make sure we connect, and make sure we can always keep this conversation going because we're in a very meaty topic here. And in this particular topic, as I, and I, wanna, I wanna encourage you to go check out the first one because it's gonna create framework for what we're talking about today. But I'm gonna give you some context to actually help you bridge the gap so that way if you're just watching today, you're not, you don't feel too left behind. But again, please go, and back, go back and watch the other show. So just a little bit of framework. We're, as, as people, as business owners, we feel like we're very innovative and very creative. And again, one of the things that we need to understand is we're, there's nothing new up underneath the sun. Okay, there is no innovation. There's not a lot of innovation that comes from because it's all already been pre-planned. It's already pre been predetermined. Okay, it's just new to us. That's the only thing that's different. And in this difference, and, and, and as a business owner, there is a lot of things you concern yourself with. And one of those major things that you concern you with is your brand. You know, there's your either A, in development of your brand, of your business, and what, is, what it's going to stand for. You're in business and have not really, really established it. Or you're in the process of being in business and you're in, in the business of establish, establishing your brand. What I'm here to talk, to, about, to talk about today is make sure that you guys understand you've been branding for a long time. You just may, ha may have not been aware of that. How, how much impact have you already left just in your personal impact and how does it show up into your business? And that's what we're talking about is that your brand is a reflection of your character. That's, this is part two of the series that we have going on when it talks about brand. It is something that has, it, it shows up in everything that you do. In our last show and in one of our examples to create framework for the introduction into the brand, we talked about men and women. How often have you created a brand, you, you created a brand experience when you met your significant other, when you met your husband, when you met your wife, you, you created a brand experience. Every single day that you're with that person, there is a brand experience that you are, that you're left with. Here's a prime example of that. You have some marriages that have lasted the whole term. You have a lot of marriages that have not that have gone into this place of divorce. Now, where did that divorce come from? Did they all of a sudden just get tired of each other? There's a myriad of things that happen, but one thing that happened is over and over again, over and over again, a brand experience has happened with each other to the point where either A, it kept you long-term and foundational, and you really cared about how that brand experience happened, or like most people, we don't think about it, we don't reflect on it, we don't fine tune the brand and our output that we, that we work on. And so inevitably, what do you come into the, the issue of? A divorce. Because your brand at one point was amazing to get you to that point of marriage, but then what you understand in marriage is that you keep on go, being with that person on a day-to-day -day basis, you start seeing that person's, you start having a brand experience with that person over and over and over and over again. The lack of inconsistency and in everything that happens in it leads to that, that brand is so bitter when you think about it, that person, that you say, you know what, we need to just, we need to just end this whole thing. Branding happens often, all the time, every single day. And you guys know it, but again, you don't, we don't think about it in these particular terms. But again, we're coming at this point where, as business owners, we're starting to reflect on our brand and what we're doing and how it's showing up and the importance of it. So let me, let me go ahead and paint the picture. Let me go ahead and get into this topic. So again, make sure that you look at last week's show to make sure that you're staying on top of everything that we're discussing. But that was framework for here, so let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and start painting the picture of how this brand thing is actually starting to show up because now you're ready to tell the world about your product. You're excited, you're saying this is amazing. We are, we are the best product for your services, for your needs in this particular area of life. That's what that brand messaging is starting to happen. Again, you're, you got your mission statement, you got your vision, 
you're excited. Now you're into your brand messaging. What is it going to be? <clears throat> How is the world going to relate to, to your product, to your brand? Remember, in our last show, in this, in this current show, we're going to bring this up again, the definition of habits. The definition of habits, and this is something you can find, just Google it. And Webster Dictionary says it's a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. So I want you to think about that. You have particular habits as you as a person that you have every single day. When you're with you every single day, guess what? We have a way of exempting ourselves. Oh, that's just what I do. You know, I know I'm crazy, but whatever. We exempted a lot. So this regular tendency or practice shows up in our everyday lives, and it actually shows up often as more, more of a signal. But just kind of like a warning light on your car, possibly, you might just ignore the signal and just kind of keep driving. Well, we do the same thing with our personal lives is we have a regular tendency or practice and we say, ah, it is what it is, it's fine. Okay, that, that is, that's that habit. And it's hard to give up because you're committed to it. Your heart knows it, it's been with it, whether good or if it's bad or good, you just stay with it because, well, there's a commitment there. You don't see anything wrong with it. But little do we know is our brand is there. Those little things that are hard to give up is actually our character and our brand in, what, in which we give off. So let's get into some of the examples. These are examples I gave in the last show, and I brought myself into the, in the component of these are some of the things that in my flesh, this is what you can expect from me. Let me just be real authentic, authentic with you. Is that in my flesh, I can be extremely inconsistent, not dependable, untrustworthy, inconsiderate, or selfish. So with me, without me kind of really understanding what this whole thing is about, these are, my, these are some of my bad habits that you can expect from me. Little did I know, these are things that I was hardwired, things that I was just doing all naturally, but it was leaving an impact on others in my life. And as a business owner, you still carry some of these things, same bad habits into them, into your business. Because just because you have a business doesn't mean all of a sudden you got better all of a sudden. You just found another entity where these bad habits are going to mature and bear fruit. So let's think about it from this particular component, okay? The spiritual connection to these bad habits is something that we, because two things are happening, we don't really think about it, or B, we don't actually open up our word to actually understand how these things are interconnected. The spiritual connection that we have to these bad habits is what makes it so hard to actually get rid of. Okay, that's why we call them bad habits. These are things that are bad that are habitual. So habitually, our spiritual connection is that we habitually have selfish ambition. We're in this place of, habit. we have a habit of idolatry. We actually have a habit of hatred. And we have, we have a habit, habit of fits of rage. And we have a habit of idolatry. That's our true foundational character that we're, that we're exuding. Because in the scripture, Galatians 5.19, it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. So when we're in our flesh, these are our habits, these are our, this is our character, this is who we are, because these are our actions that people are experiencing from us. And this is the fruit that we're bearing, the manifestation and what we call it as, we, we, we call it, well, I'm just inconsistent, I'm not dependable, I'm untrustworthy, I'm inconsiderate sometimes, and I'm selfish sometimes. We say these little things, but these are all manifestations of the foundational reason as to where these actually come from. That's how all this stuff is interconnected. This is why it's actually important for us to understand the spiritual aspect because if you don't understand the spiritual aspect, there's nothing that you can heal from. You're going to be stuck. And if you don't, you got to understand the spiritual uh, connection to understand how strong it is. 
Now, as a business owner, you're in this place where you're thinking, you know what? I just want to be successful. Because in Genesis 1, 27, and please check this out just to verify. I could be a little bit off. It could be either 27 or 28. But it talks about in our previous show, God blessed them and said, be fruitful, go and subdue the earth, et cetera, et cetera. So our business ownership and our drive for and our drive for success, success is not anything amazing. It's awesome to us, but it's not anything because we're, it's already part of our blessing as mankind. That drive is already there. So we're just activating that drive and we're looking to subdue the earth in that, in that particular way and be fruitful in that way. Okay? So, but as you enter into business and we talk about your character and we talk about some of your things, you start to actually live a double life. I want you, I want you to let that sink in. You know, uh, 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 a couple will say, oh, well, you know, you, you'll have a, a double life. You got this weird experience on the outside of the home. Okay, you're, li you're living a double life. It means you're two kind of different people. Well, what does a double life in your in, in your day to day life look like? This is where you have to open up your heart to the and, and don't close off at this at this stage, because this is how majority of us, the ninety nine percent of us live. Because our true brand, our true character, is we're inconsistent, we're not dependable, we're untrustworthy, we're selfish. Or inconsiderate. We have these things going on that are not healed yet. Okay? They're still present with us. These are still coming from fruit that we're starting to bear. Okay? We know it. Maybe our significant other knows it. But the world doesn't really quite know it yet. And that's one, that's the trickiest thing about us. And that's something, that's actually a trick that we know that is there. And that's why we're able to live this double life. What do I mean by that double life? Well, then on the outside, the, the created brand that you're in, your, you're, in the, you're in the office space, you're at home, you're sitting here thinking about what is my brand awareness? What am I, what's my branding going to be? You know, you're getting into that creative part. Again, your mission is your foundation, is your heart, your spiritual side of you, if you will. You got your um, vision, which is your creative part. And then you got this a level of brand awareness. And how do you want people to experience your company? So you haven't, your character is this, but you want the public to experience your product and your service and you like this. That you're trustworthy. That you love to serve. That you're dependable. That you're unselfish and that you're really considerate. This is our painted face. You know how it is. You can have a bad day at home. Go to a business meeting and smile and shake hands and, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Hey, yeah, my name is Maurice. You know, this is what I do. What do you do? Hey, we should go have coffee. Coffee. See, but just a few minutes ago, was I not coming home for upset? Didn't I just have some uh, situation going on or whatever, whatever? But see, there's a double life that is happening. And we get used to this double life. It becomes easy because I got to paint the picture if I'm going to try to get what? Revenue. So there's a created brand, but also I'm trying to woo more people towards my company and the product and services. So again, I'm part of your thought process and my impression because everybody says and all it takes is that first impression. It means everything. Okay. Because again, so now that you understand that the first impression means everything, that's your brand that you want to leave as, as your legacy for that moment. And again, that's where we come to, to, to that place of being trustworthy, serving, dependable, and selfish and considerate. We're all these things on the outside, but on our day-to-day, -day, we're inconsistent, not dependable, untrustworthy, selfish, and considerate. Do you see what I mean by that double life standard that we start to create? So, John 10.10 10 reads... The thief comes to only steal, kill, and destroy. Okay? Now, in connection with Genesis 3, 4, you will not, you will not certain, or you will not surely die, the serpent told her. You remember that lie that, that he, he twisted the word, all right, and said, 
you will not surely die when the, when the Lord said you will surely die. This is how the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. There is something that happens to you when you say that I can go out and I'm already operating in this mode, but I can go out and smile and act, like, act in this mode. The fact that you're already being hypocritical in your interactions and not, not consistent there, you're already inconsistent. You're already starting to show inconsistency already. Because your, your day-to-day, this is how you are. But then out there in the public, you're Mr. Trustworthy or Mrs. Trustworthy and all this other stuff. Okay, when people are like, no, that's not how you act. The thief says you will not surely die. See, the thief is operating in that same mode for you to act disobedient every single time. Because he already understood what will happen if you're disobedient. He's op- he all. His first offer of disobedience is you will not surely die. He doesn't doesn't go against the old manuscript that already worked in the beginning. That would be weird. That would not make sense. He, he, He abides by the book just as much as God abides by the book. Okay? So understand, in the early introduction to mankind, his introduction to you is going to be you will not surely die if you're if you're inconsistent in how you show up your home life and your, and also your other life, and your business life, yeah, you're, you're, you'll be fine. But are you really fine? I want you to understand, something just died and something happened to you because now you have to live two personas now. You just died. Your brand is a reflection of your character and you just died. You already compromised your, your whole business. Now, how does, this, how does this compromise start to develop? So Matthew 7, 7 26 uh, through 27 reads, But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rain and floods come and the winds beat against, it, that, against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. You understand? Let's, let's place a house with your business. Okay. And let's think, let's think about the fact of you have decided that you can do both lives, okay? And that you surely did. So you're not obedient to the word, okay? You're already in the foolish standpoint right now to think that what you're building is foundational. So as you're creating the brand, you're starting to think and you got all everybody around you like, oh, I'm creating a good solid brand. Well, guess what? It's not being built on a strong foundation, is it? Because there's inconsistency already there. So your, your business model, your brand that you're trying to develop is already built on, being built on a house of sand. This is the enemy's desire, desired outcome. It's for that relationship to alter your character, which it already has, to actually start to bear fruit. The fact that you're out there and you're doing this inconsistency because it's not like you stop yourself and say, whoa, I need to really get myself together before I built this brand, a brand awareness of my company. No, you just start going with it because you start to realize, well, I didn't die. Nothing has happened to me. Huh, this is kind of working. So now you're starting to have this life and you're starting to, unfortunately, have a feeling of success because that's what the enemy is going to do. He's going to help you build fruit off of this altered character so that way you feel like you're successful and so it's a trap and let's talk about the phases of this trap and how it goes you're you're you have this altered character okay you're not operating on your best you're not healed you're still operating from the flesh but now you put that into your business now you're starting to develop this business it's starting to develop the fruit okay which is your product or service it's already starting to be produced. People are starting to like it. So they're starting to get to know it. And they're starting to experience how you operate. Phase two of the trap. As long as you start to build fruit, okay, you're in that place of fruit and, the, and you reach the public, guess what? Now you've actually developed a commitment. Because this altered character is actually still producing 
everything that's happening here. Okay, you're still struggling. Now you have an entity that this character is in. There's a commitment there. Now there's a commitment to the fruit that is starting to bear, which is the product and service. Now there's a commitment to reach the public. You see all those commitments that, are, that have happened based on your brand and how you developed it? And it's starting to produce fruit because now it's reaching the public and the public is starting to purchase that? Phase three of the trap. Well, the alter character is now committed to the entity in your business is also starting to produce fruit, which is your product or service. It's reaching the public, and now you feel like it's gotten so big that you can start hiring employees. This thing is starting to operate all from an altered character. But see, can, a, can an inconsistent character manage all this day to day? That's my question to you. I want you to let that simmer. It can't. That's the challenge. That's the trap. That's where the scripture starts to repeat itself when it says, you will surely, you will surely not die. Okay, that's where the trap has happened. When you eat of that tree, when you ate of the tree saying that I can, my altered character can still help me develop uh, the business of my dreams, well, there's a trap that's being created. And that's where the this, this, uh, this scripture starts to run in, because again, the enemy is scripturally also. He understands that in Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seems right into a man, but in the end is the way to death. This is a way, because again, that means that the enemy is going to develop a trap. He's going to develop a way, okay, to the point where you get trapped, to you, where you feel death. When you get to the point of, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I can't handle all this. This is getting out of control. See, it, it's starting to develop a life of its own. That's where your stress comes in. That's where all this stuff that you're not supposed to feel, you're starting to experience death every single day, even more, more and more so. But now you've created something that you feel like is great and that you don't want to lose. And what do you do? Now you're in a death trap. The expectations of your brand. This is what the enemy truly wants. Okay? I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you guys back home for a minute. And then we'll go back to your business. When you're married, when you're with and you're dating. Okay? Again, I'm taking you back home. We're painting another picture here. When you develop that brand, when, I, when that person has become interested in you, and you become interested in them, so on and so forth, Right? Their brand, you're saying that that brand is perfect enough for me to actually be with you and give you my life. Because I feel like your brand will take care of me and everything and vice versa. Once you get to that place and that committed place, the most major thing that happens to every single body happens. And it's, it all happens in one word. And that one word is Expectations. You don't talk about, well, here are my expectations. You don't talk about it daily. It's just something that happens. Your heart already goes there. Your heart's like a, a machine. It starts to expect what it loves and what it commits to. This is what the enemy wants because he understands that. The he understands the definition of expectations. And what is it? It's a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. That is the definition of expectations. What is that strong belief connected to? What's the I already gave, over the, gave the answer, but the major part of this definition is what? Strong belief. That means when the strong belief is not here, it's a here. Your heart just said, yes, I have a strong belief. I have an expectation, and I'm going to go ahead and put my life because your, your, your heart is where everything comes from, right? Is where your life is. So I'm going to put my life on the line for that thing. For that thing that something will happen or be the case in the future. That means in the household, I'm committed to, and I feel like you're going to be that way in the future. So now my expectations can be that of you. Same thing in business. Okay, I start to buy your product or service because I have a strong belief 
that whatever your product and service is, is going to be that case in the future. Okay, this strong belief is what the enemy wants, is that one moment because your heart is on the line. Everybody's heart is on the line. This is where the meat and potatoes of your brand reflect your character and how catastrophic it is. Now this double life starts to click in. This is where we hit that again. You're inconsistent, not dependable, untrustworthy, selfish, inconsiderate, but your brand that you're trying to create outside of that is trustworthy, servant, dependable, unselfish, and also considerate. Do you, what happens, can you put your strong belief in this? Think about that. Can you put your belief in that? If, if I introduce this to the table and say, hey, put your belief on this, buy my product, because this is, this is who I am. This is what you're actually buying. Would you feel comfortable buying that? That's, it. that's probably what, that's exactly what I thought. It's where all this stuff starts to occur. Because who has expectations from you? Now, Maurice, when I look at your graph here, that's, that's cute and everything, but what's, what's going on with the you, you? Did you remember that you have expectations of yourself? Wouldn't it be great for the enemy to actually expect you to disappoint you? Wouldn't it be great for you to disappoint clients, to disappoint employees, to disappoint family? How many entities is that all in one place? You understand the enemy says, oh, well, instead of having you over there, you over here, let me gather you guys in one place and let me put these expectations from this person that's operating from a double lifestyle as far as emotionally into one place and let me get them all. The enemy's attack, he wants everyone who has expectations from you to end up disappointed. I'm going to show you some examples in the next, next week's show of how this thing shows up in, our, in that disappointment. Okay, well, again, we're going to bring up some life experiences because, again, we don't think about branding in our personal day-to-day. -day. Branding does not happen once you get in business. Branding is a lifestyle, people. So what we're forgetting this, this is a whole lifestyle. So that's the, one of the biggest messages I want you to get from this and, and, keep, and keep tuning in because we're really hitting on something here. I want everybody to join us again on this show next week and keep this conversation going and please share it. Make sure your friends see it and make sure we keep this conversation because this is what is going to save everybody. But in the meantime, unfortunately, I actually have to get back to work. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.